This time let's talk about the voltage source converter HVDC technology and compare it to HVDC Classic. The VSC technology is more modern. The big advantage, it can be used for black starts. That means that it can feed power into a network which does not provide an active source. And this is the key difference to HVDC Classic. In HVDC Classic, you need to have an active load. You need to have a load where there is already a power source. I referred to an earlier tutorial about HVDC Classic. Core switch of HVDC Classic is a thyristor. Whereas for VSC HVDC, the core element is a transistor. You may call it IGBT. Here you see that HVDC Classic can feed power into an active load into a functioning AC network only. VSC HVDC with transistor converters can feed into an active network or into a passive network. The key difference is illustrated here. It lies in the inverter. This is the part which is rebuilding an AC from a DC source. The DC source, remember, is the line. The key difference is that you can switch on a thyristor, but the switching off of the thyristor cannot be performed by the thyristor. The thyristor needs a current zero to switch off, and this current switch zero has to be provided by the load. Whereas the SVC technology, the active switch can be switched on and off. This is achieved by changing the resistance from zero, close to zero, to close to infinite. And you see here, in the case of the thyristor, once the thyristor is switched on, the current flows through the thyristor. But once the current is flowing through the thyristor, since it is a DC current, it cannot be interrupted anymore. So there is no commutation at the thyristor. The only way you can achieve commutation at the thyristor is that there is an external active oscillating load which forces the current through zero. In the contrary, when you have an active switch, an IGBT or a transistor, you can see here the transistor can be switched on then the current flows, but then the transistor can also be switched off again just by reducing the gate voltage from a few volts to zero, and then the resistance of the switching element increases to close to infinite, and then the current goes back to zero very quickly. Therefore, with an SVC, you can synthesize an oscillating output waveform, which is not possible with the thyristor. On YouTube, you can find another tuto which is explaining in more details the functioning of a DC-AC inverter. This is a summary of this earlier tuto. You can see here on the left side how you can artificially synthesize sinusoidal waveform or an oscillating waveform just by switching on and off the IGBTs in the right sequence. So you can see here you have a positive waveform and here you have a negative waveform. In order to get the sinusoidal waveform you use the pulse code modulation, which is then si synthesizing a si sinus waveform at the output. So here you see the, P the PCM and the integrated PCM curve delivers a very nice sinus curve at the output of the inverter. The nice thing with the VSC technology is the following. You can use VSC either as rectifier for the sending end and inverters for the receiving end or the other way around as inverters for the sending end and uh, rectifiers for the receiving end. So what is then the great secret? The number one secret is that there is always induction between the source or the load EMF and the output voltage synthesized by the converter. By establishing a phase angle between the source or load EMF and the output of the converter, you can control the direction of the power flow. If the EMF is lagging the output of the converter, then the power flows from the converter 
to the source or to the load. The other way around, if the EMF is leading, then the power flows from the source or the load to the converter. And that angle you can control. The second part of the secret, and this is typical for VSC technology, is that there is a big capacitor on the DC side of the converters. A part of the capacitor is the line capacitance. These capacitors are charged or discharged from the by the converters on the load side and on the source side. This is now the model of a converter in the simulator. What you see here is the DC part of the converter. This is the line and the additional smoothing capacitors. This is this side. Then you have here an active load. An active load which can feed power in both directions. It can feed power back to the DC, but it can also take power from the DC part and feed it into the system. The system on the load side is, rep is represented by this AC source. What you also can see here is the pulse code with controller. What you can nicely see here now is first of all the voltage on the DC side. This is the voltage in this capacitor. You can see the voltage of the source and the current through the source and the power from the source. And you see also the voltage of the PCM of the converter and the synthesized sinus, sinus voltage, which is provided by the electronic sinus curve synthesizer. And you see right now there is very little lagging between the source, the output of the converter and the load side voltage. And therefore the voltage on the DC side remains constant. Now I artificially start to create a lagging phase angle between the output of the converter and the load side. And what you can see now see how the output is now leading so the converter is leading the load and what I can see now is that the voltage at the capacitor is decreasing that means power flows from the DC side to the load side and the voltage is decreasing the other way around I can to a leading converter angle and we see now that the load side is leading the converter and therefore power is now fed from the load side back to the DC side and this is how I can, can control my power flow so leading load you can see how the voltage is increasing at the capacitor Or the other way around, I send power from the DC side to the load side. And you see how the voltage of the line of the DC side is decreasing. And this is how you control the power flow. So the key part of the secret is the phase angle between the AC source and the output of the converter. Curve is the power can see power is either on the negative side or it moves to the positive side depending on my lead or lagging phase angle. It is by keeping the voltage over this capacitance C constant that you guarantee that, it, that there is always as much power fed into the DC part as power is taken away from the load side from the DC part. If you have more load power than source power, the voltage on the DC side will decrease. And the other way around, if you feed too much power into the DC side, then the voltage will increase. By controlling the voltage, you safeguard the power balance in the source and the load. Here we have now the complete model. We have a long line represented by the capacitor. And we have the two source and load side. 
and between we have the two converters. You can see the red curve of the power output and you can see the red curve of the power input to the system. And you can also see the voltage at the capacitor. If I take out now more power than I feed into the system, you will see that the voltage will of the line will decrease. So I take more power out than I feed in right now by controlling the phase angle on the load side. And you see how this voltage decreases. The DC voltage here of the line side is now decreasing. So I take too much power out of the system right now. If I reduce my power consumption on the load side, I decrease the phase angle and we can now see how the voltage of the line is increasing again. This is this curve you can see here. So now I feed too much power into the system. So I reduce the power I feed into the system by going to the source side and reducing the lead angle there. So this is how you can control the power balance between the source and the load side of the system. We have now learned how VSC technology works if you have an active source and an active load on both sides of the DC. Let's now have a look at how VSC HVDC technology works if you have a passive load. Let's now have a look what happens if I replace my active load by a passive load. I simulate now my passive load. You can see here the voltage of the DC line. You can see here this red curve is the power input to the system. So this is this one. So we feed power into the system and at the output I extract power from the system. So this is the power which is fed into the resistance, into the load resistance. And you can see if I increase now the power consumption, you can see how my voltage of the DC side is decreased. So I extract now more power from the DC side, then I feed in from the AC side. So with a IGBT inverter, you can really synthesize a very nice sinus curve at the output, even though you have a passive load. I further increase the power. I may decrease the power input so I can see it a little bit better. You can see now how the voltage is decreasing on the DC side. So this is just to show you how this whole system works equally well when you have only a passive load. As usual, you can go to the simulator and play around with the models.